Welcome back. Land use and spatial planning had been identified by the National Planning Commission as crucial to the future of the country. But legislation crafted in 1995 to regulate land use management and planning to promote development, particularly in rural areas, failed the constitutional test. The Constitutional Court found that the Development Facilitation Act of 1995 was invalid because some clauses assigned exclusive municipal powers to provincial governments. The Constitutional Court gave Parliament until June this year to come up with amended legislation. But the Spatial Planning and Land Use Management Bill drafted to replace the Development Facilitation Act in its entirety missed that deadline. But to tell us more about the legislation and the process, we are now joined by the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Rural Development and Land Reform, Mr. Stone Cizani. Good morning, sir, and welcome. Good morning. Mr. Cizani, the Development Facilitation Act of 1995 was found to be invalid because of some clauses assigned exclusive uh, municipal powers to provincial governments. What were those powers? Well, uh, in Free State in particular, there's not one municipality that uh, performs that function. It's the provincial uh, government that does that for them. And uh, Chapter 5 and Chapter 6 of that act stipulates that, that those functions belong to the local government. They do not belong to the provincial government. But it's not only Free State that uh, created the problem. Uh, there were other provinces that were creating that problem as well. But why was it necessary to replace the act in its entirety uh, and not only those clauses found to be unconstitutional? The country had uh, a number of uh, pieces of legislation based on the old uh, four provinces uh, acts. And we, you need a framework, an umbrella act, mm -hmm. which will govern the whole country, which will also regulate how the provinces will perform those functions and how the local authorities will take responsibility for their own space. But to, to what extent have delays in processing the bill affected stakeholders such as business uh, municipalities and civil society? Did it mean that no planning could be could take place? Like I said, the four municipalities there's four provinces that used to exist before uh, South Africa was created had their own legislations, but they are archaic and they need uh, upgrading, they need, but they do not stop these uh, local authorities to perform their functions. Well, what exactly is being proposed in the new uh, piece of legislation? The piece of legislation, first of all, like I said, creates the framework for the province, for the country uh, via the national minister to, for the uh, spatial development framework, which will then cascade into land use schemes, which replaces the zoning that municipalities are performing now. The, 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 the piece of legislation now in, in front of us in the, how, in, in the committee re creates a framework for the provincial governments to perform their functions and the local authorities to do so. Uh, members of the committee expressed some dissatisfaction with the overlap in departmental authority and the high levels of confusion uh, between different levels of government. How has that been dealt with? The, like I said, the, the, the legislation enables the, the country to have that framework so that it demarcates purely what the roles of each. Remember, development is complex. It is not a one uni unitary department or silo, but it governs development everywhere, which means, therefore, there will be a national framework which takes care of national interest and the unity of development and economic development across the country. How is this likely to affect uh, land that falls under the ju jurisdiction of traditional leaders? Have they been consulted? Well, they, 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 according to the report from the department, they, they, all the stakeholders were consulted. But the, the responsibility of the, of the portfolio committee is to consult all the stakeholders, irrespective of whether they were consulted by the, the minister and the department. But for us, the key issue here is the people themselves that are affected by the legislation. No municipality is, is uh, only urban. All municipalities are wall-to-wall, -wall, including those areas that are, are covering traditional leaders. And therefore, we'll have to take that into consideration when we process the law. Finally and briefly, how is this process likely to unfold? Well, we close, we advertise for people to give us 
the comments on the law by Friday last week. And that, that process has already yielded some comments. But the next thing is to now call for verbal or oral uh, submissions to, to the committee next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. And thereafter, we'll then tour the country to make sure that all those communities that need to be consulted are, are brought forward to be able to comment on the law that, uh, that governs their life. Mr. Stone Cezanne is the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Rural Development and Land Reform. Thank you very much for coming through, Thank sir. You. Thank you. MPs in the National Assembly pay tribute to former President Nelson Mandela under the theme, Take Action and Make Every Day a Mandela Day. That's our story after the break. Stay with us.